On Capitol Hill, the battle for the gavel drawing closer. House Republicans nominating GOP Majority Leader Steve Scalise for the speakership. Of course, he's the rep from Louisiana, and he edged out House Judiciary Committee Chair Jim Jordan with a final tally of 113.99. This was a secret ballot. That means the votes are anonymous. They were taken after both candidates pitched their visions and their strategies to their Republican colleagues. But the next chapter in this political chaos uh, for Scalise, what is that? He has to secure 217 votes from this very divided party. ABC News contributing political correspondent and co-author of Politico's playbook, Rachel Bade, is joining us now. Rachel, I know you've been watching this unfold. So take us behind the scenes. The Majority Leader Scalise, he won this secret ballot, uh, but there's no vote scheduled, at least for today, as of now, on this House floor. We know, Rachel, this is a razor-thin margin. Does he have the votes, do you think, to be elected speaker? Not right now he doesn't, Kena, and that's exactly why Republicans canceled this vote. They were supposed to go to the floor at 3 p.m. to basically officially uh, certify Scalise uh, as speaker with those 217 votes, but he doesn't have them. So what's happening right now, he's working behind the scenes, trying to sort of get folks who are saying they won't support him on the floor in to meet with him on the phone to try to see if there's a sort of deal they can hash out. Uh, but he's not there, and we're not sure how long it, it's actually going to take. So I would say there's a big difference, though, between where Steve Scalise is right now and where Kevin McCarthy has been. I mean, there's a lot of uh, sort of anger and resentment that had been built up around Kevin McCarthy when it comes to this group of conservatives that ousted him from the speakership. That sort of sentiment is actually not there with Scalise. We are hearing people say they won't support him, but their issues seem to be more policy and process aligned. And without that resentment, you know, people are telling me, Republicans are telling me privately, they think Scalise will get there eventually. It's just a question of how long it takes him, Kena. And with that focus on policy, Rachel, you know, he spoke to reporters earlier with his unifying tone that we know so well. And he said, you know, we still have work to do, not just in the House, but in the country. He also mentioned one of the first things on his agenda after support for Israel would be the U.S. border crisis. He said that millions have come across the last few years, and that includes people on the terrorist watch list. And he seemed confident, Rachel, that he could reach across the aisle for support when it comes to border security. Yeah, he's basically picking up where Kevin McCarthy left off in terms of pushing for border security. I mean, we have to keep in mind that in just a couple of weeks, once again, we will be facing a shutdown showdown. And Republicans here in the House, they have been adamant that they want to tie some sort of border issue to government funding. Uh, now, clearly, they tried to do that in the past. They ended up caving and keeping the government open without that concession. Uh, but we could see them sort of double down on that now, and that is what Scalise is signaling he will do. All right, Rachel made this uh, fight for speakership far from over. Our thanks to you as always. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.